Good morning. Good morning. The theme for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is that God takes charge. There's one theme that runs through all our lessons, and that's the analogy of sheep, which is not a very flattering thing to say to Christians, because sheep are really, really stupid. <laughs> And they do the stupidest things. And they need a shepherd to take care of them. In a few minutes, when we read the 23rd Psalm, we hear about thy rod and thy staff. Okay, well, the shepherd's staff was used not just to fend off wild animals, but also for discipline of the sheep. And so it is that in our first lesson this morning, the people come together as Christians to form a new congregation. And as they join themselves to one another, they not only share the gospel message with the result that the church grows on a regular basis, but they also share what resources they have in common. So they take the concept of the church potluck to its ultimate conclusion and share all their resources with one another. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many signs and wonders were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm for this morning needs no introduction. Psalm 23, page 225, in the front of the hymnals. We'll read the psalm in unison. Psalm 23, page 225. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I had a chance to post on Facebook this morning the mom song. <laughs> if you are not familiar with it, we'll bring it up on the computer for you after the service. It's from a church worship experience, this mom is standing on stage at a microphone and she is reciting all the things that we have grown up hearing our moms tell us. You know, chew your food, be quiet at the table. If your friends jumped off a cliff, would you jump with them? And so on and so on. The catch is she does it to the William Tell Overture, which many of you know as the theme song from The Lone Ranger. I'm not even going to try and attempt it for you, but we'll play it for you later. But one of the lines in there is one that I'm familiar with from when I was growing up. <laughs> it's the line that says, if you want to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. 
Okay, remember that one, everybody? Yeah. I remember that one, Mama. Uh, well, apparently, my mom and the Apostle Simon Peter's mom must have known each other. <laughs> Being about, never mind. I going to make a comment about relative age, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Because we hear Peter writing to Christians in Rome who are being persecuted for their faith, and he says to them, if you are suffering because of some crime or misdeed you have committed, so what? You deserve it. But if you are suffering because of nothing wrong that you've done, if you're suffering because of your devotion to Jesus, then rejoice, because God sees and blesses. From the first letter of Peter, chapter 2. It is a credit to you, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? If you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Here at the second lesson. In our gospel, we hear about good shepherds and poor shepherds. The good shepherd being one who has a relationship with his sheep so that he can identify each and every one of them, which I think is remarkable because I think all sheep look stupid. They just all look alike to me. <laughs> but nevertheless, he knows them all, and as he calls them, they come, and he leads them into the sheep pen. You know, come on in, Snowball, come on in, Blackie, come on in, Fluff Fluff, whatever names you give to sheep. I would say, you know, Bernie and Homer and Clyde. <laughs> but then, being the good shepherd, he lays down across the opening to the sheep pen, personally assuring their safety in the event of threat. We rise to the good news of the gospel. This is the gospel according to John, the 10th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. <coughs> Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. 